Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and my Game of Thrones Season 4 countdown continues. For this video, I thought it'd be fun to do a history of dragons in the world. A lot of dragons' history gets tied up with the Targaryens whenever they get into Westeros, so for this video, let's try and focus on flame and scale as much as possible. If you're finding me for the first time, I'm just doing a fun countdown to the Season 4 premiere with bonus videos. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. If there's any videos that you see that I haven't done, please feel free to suggest one in the comments. So at the start of Book 1 and Season 1, dragons have been believed extinct for over 150 years. The last living dragon died during the reign of Aegon III, nicknamed the Dragonbane. At the point in where we are currently in the chronology of Ice and Fire, there are several historical texts about dragon lore. So if someone in the series like Samwell wanted to learn more, he'd have to learn from either someone like Old Aemon at the Night's Watch or from one of the other rare existing texts. One of the things I really love about George R. R. Martin is, is that he includes super fine details like this. Hopefully someone will actually write these books in real life someday so that we can actually read them. Here they are in no particular order. Number one, Blood and Fire, also known as the Death of the Dragons. It's one of the rare texts about dragons in King's Landing. It's supposed to be hidden somewhere underneath the Maester's Citadel in Old Town. For some reason, it's covered in blood. They're not really clear on whether that's dragon's blood or human blood. Number two, Dragons, Worms, and Wyverns, They're a Natural History, written by Septon Barth. He was actually the Hand of the King during the reign of Jaehaerys I. The other Septons considered Barth to be something of a sorcerer. So later during the reign of Baelor I, who was also a Septon, all the copies of this book were actually burnt. But a few pages are supposed to have survived till today, and Tyrion even had one at one point. It's really notable for claiming that dragons are neither male nor female. They can switch gender at will, meaning that Daenerys dragons will be able to reproduce with each other at some point. Number three, The Dance of the Dragons, a true telling by Grand Maester Munkin. It's a fictional text of the Targaryen Civil War, Dance of the Dragons. In real life though, George R. R. Martin published a pretty inclusive retelling of The Dance of the Dragons called The Princess and the Queen, which you can actually read as part of the Dangerous Women anthology. Number four, Dragonkin by Maester Thomax. It's actually a book that exists at Castle Black at the Night's Watch. The copy belonged to Maester Aemon until he died when Jon Snow took it. If you remember in the trailer, you can actually see Samwell and Jon poring over text in the Night's Watch library. Maybe at some point during this season, they'll actually find that book. Careful for spoilers for this next book because it includes some things from Dance with Dragons, so if you don't know anything, just skip forward in the video about 30 seconds or so. And the last book, number five, The Shy Maid's Dragon Lore, is actually a book being planned by Tyrion, but because he needs to do more research, he's hoping to get another famous book, the Fires of the Freehold, a concise history of Old Valyria, which actually has details about ancient dragons. So that's the end of the spoilery part, but talking about Old Valyria is a good way to transition to the beginning of dragons coexisting with humans. Very little is actually known about the lineage of the great dragons before the Targaryens brought them to Westeros, but there are some cool facts about how they were used in Valyria as a source of influence and power. So the Valyrians actually started out as sheep herders in the east, in about 5,000 years before the current events, they found dragons roosting in the 14 fires, a ring of volcanoes around the peninsula where they lived. They eventually learned to tame them, and with the traditional use of domestication and magic, they used the dragons to carve out what would become the Great Valyrian Empire that existed until the Doom. Their territory basically ran along the entire eastern continent, and they were ruled by a group of people, not just one king and queen. The most powerful of them, the most powerful families, were called the Dragon Lords. So quick side note about the actual magic the Valyrians use because it's a little bit different from the other types of magic in the world. The type of magic that they use was specifically tied to dragons called blood and flame, but the other kinds you can find in the world include elemental control, divination, skin changing, raising the dead, necromancy, and glamoring. So now we have to talk about the Targaryens just a little bit because their history is tied up with dragons so much. But in Old Valyria, of the 40 families comprising the Dragon Lords, they were actually a pretty minor house, so they were not a big deal at all. But they were the only family that survived the Doom, so whenever they brought dragons to Westeros, they were able to rule unchallenged and become this big, massive family. We do know the names of most of the dragons starting at this point, though, when Aegon brought the three first dragons to Westeros, including his dragon, Valerion, Rhaenys dragon, Meraxes, and Visenya's dragon, Vagar. Balerion is the most famous just because of his size. He's like a house. You can actually see how Daenerys kind of mirrors Aegon and that she brought three dragons into the world. Drogon being the closest analog of Balerion. He ended up living for about 200 years and just died of old age, unlike all the other dragons during the Civil War. 
If you ever wondered why Harrenhal looks so melty and ominous, it's because Aegon used Balerion and the other dragons to roast Harren the Black right after he finished the castle and moved in. He had boasted that it was impregnable, but turns out walls do not keep dragons out. Another really cool fact about Balerion is, is that whenever he conquered the Six Kingdoms, remember he didn't conquer Dorne, and took their swords to melt them down to make the Iron Throne, Balerion's fire was used to help smelt the metal. After their death, the lineage of the dragons gets a little spotty, but we do know about the six that belong to Jaehaerys I, and then the many that were part of the Dance of the Dragons. During that, there were six greens, ten blacks, two that changed from blacks to greens, remember dragons are very changeable, two neutral dragons, and then one that survived. After that, the last living dragon existed during the time of Aegon III, roughly about 150 years before events on the show. So obviously Daenerys could not have brought dragons back into the world if there were no dragon eggs. So whenever they're talking about dragons not existing or, you know, going extinct from the world, they're just talking about living, breathing dragons. Dragons lay a lot of eggs, and not all of them get hatched. So if they go unhatched long enough, they'll just become petrified. The ones that Danny was given were petrified, but the magic of Miri Mazdur combined with Danny sacrificing her on Khal Drogo's funeral pyre brought them back. In the book, it said that Miri used a blood magic spell and her own sacrifice made it complete. I choose to believe that it was connected to the same type of magic practiced by the Valyrians. So it's really interesting to note that there is one other dragon egg in present day that's known to have existed. Supposedly, Euron Greyjoy said that he had an egg, but then threw it into the sea because it was petrified and he didn't really know about blood magic. Remember though, he is the one that has the Valyrian dragon horn, so hopefully some point in the future he'll be able to use that. So, if you want to learn more about dragons in Game of Thrones, I recommend you read George R. R. Martin's short story, The Princess and the Queen. It covers things in fascinating detail. But be sure to let me know what your favorite dragon is in Game of Thrones. It doesn't have to be a live one, it could be one that existed at any point. As cool as Drogon is getting on the show, it would have been so much fun to fly on Balerion. He is like as big as a house. It'd be like flying on a jumbo jet that breathes flame. So, be sure to subscribe to get the rest of my countdown videos, and remember to leave me suggestions for future videos in the comments. Right now, click here to learn about Winds of Winter. There's actually a couple of excerpts that have been published. And click here to get the rest of my Season 4 breakdowns. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tonight for Walking Dead. High fives.